President Obama continues the charm offensive. Good to see you, sir. Is a grand bargain still possible? We get answers from our exclusive guest, House Speaker John Boehner, only on This Week. Plus, the idea is called America, and it still works. We're here to rebuild a country. Conservatives crash the Capitol. Ave Mus Papa. Cardinals make an historic choice. And the Pentagon adding new missile defenses on the West Coast. How serious is the North Korean threat to all of us? Plus, on the 10th anniversary of the Iraq War, ABC's own Bob Woodruff is here for a special look back. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos. Reporting from the museum in Washington, Martha Raddatz. Hello again. George is off today. Great to have you with us. If President Obama hoped his charm offensive would improve chances of a grand bargain, the release of those dueling budget proposals this week showed just how far apart the two parties really are. So where does it leave us? Is a deal more unlikely or is there a glimmer of hope? Our exclusive guest will have a lot of say in whether it does happen. We're pleased to welcome House Speaker John Boehner. Good morning, Mr. Boehner. On Good to be President, with you, Martha. It's great to have you here. I call it the so-called charm offensive because you don't seem particularly charmed. You wrote that outreach is always positive, but then you wrote you had heard it all before, saying it's going to take more than dinner dates and phone calls from the president so were those dinners and meetings a good thing or did it make no difference at all? Well, it's always a good thing to uh, engage in more conversation, uh, engage more members in the conversation that uh, have not been involved up to this point. Uh, but when you get down to the, the bottom line, the president believes that we have to have more taxes from the American people. We're not going to get very far. If the president uh, doesn't believe that the goal ought to be to balance the budget over the next 10 years, uh, I'm not sure we're going to get very far. Uh, and, and this is the whole issue. We have a spending problem here in Washington, and it's time to solve the problem. Where's your trust level with the president? I mean, you're talking about these meetings as if they really didn't mean much. No. The president and I, as I've made very clear, have a very good relationship. We're open with each other. We're honest with each other. Uh, but we're trying to bridge some big differences. So do you trust President Obama? Absolutely. 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 And there's no issue there. Listen to what President Obama told George Stephanopoulos about the debt this week. We've already cut uh, $2.5, $2.7 trillion out of the deficit. If the sequester stays in, you've got over $3.5 trillion of deficit reduction already. And so we don't have an immediate crisis in terms of debt. In fact, for the next 10 years, it's going to be in a sustainable place. Is he right that we don't have an immediate crisis? We do not have an immediate debt crisis. But we all know that we have one looming. And we have one looming uh, because we have entitlement programs that are not sustainable in their current form. They're going to go bankrupt. How long do we have to solve our problems? Nobody knows where this is. It could be a year, two years, three years, four years. Uh, it's not an immediate problem. Uh, but we can so all... I agree with the president on that. The Amer yes. But his point as he went on to say in that interview, is that we don't, we don't really need to do anything at this point. And I would argue that we do need to do something. Well, the American the things... people know you can't continue to spend money that you don't have. And that's what the president wants to do. The president also said in that interview that his goal wasn't merely to balance the budget. What, he talks about a ba balanced plan. What's balanced about a budget that never gets to balance. Let, let's, let's take a listen to exactly what President Obama said about balancing the budget. No, uh, we're not going to balance the budget in 10 years. My goal is not to chase a, a balanced budget just for the sake of balance. My goal is how do we grow the economy, put people back to work, and if we do that, we're going to be bringing in more revenue. If we've controlled spending and we've got a smart entitlement package, then potentially what you have is balance. <laughs> A quick response to that. That's exactly the point. Balancing the budget will, in fact, help our economy. It'll help create jobs in our country, get our economy going again, and put more people back to work. The fact that the government continues to spend more than a trillion dollars every year that it doesn't have scares investors, scares business people, makes them less willing to hire people. Is the grand bargain 
dead? I don't know whether we can uh, come to a, a big agreement. If we do, uh, it'll be between the two parties on Capitol Hill. Hopefully, uh, we can go to conference on these budgets, and hope springs eternal in my mind. Senators Graham and Ayotte and other Republicans have said they're open to new revenue if the president is willing to do significant entitled reform. Is that something you could consider? And the Democratic leadership is reportedly now willing to sign on to entitlement reform if revenue is also on the table. Would you say no to that? The president got his tax hikes on January the 1st. The talk about raising revenue is over. It's time to deal with a spending problem. President suggested cuts to Social Security and means testing Medicare. Is that enough? What more does he have to do on entitlements for you to consider additional revenue? We need is that to, just no way? We need to put the entitlement programs on a sustainable path. They're not today. And Americans understand this. Uh, and, and the sooner we make changes to these programs to put them on a sustainable path, the easier it will be to make those changes. Let, let's move on to the Republican Party itself and, and the CPAC conference this week. Two Republican senators and possible presidential candidates spoke at CPAC, Senator Marco Rubio and Senator Rand Paul, but they had very different messages about the current state of the GOP. Senator Rubio saying, we don't need any new ideas. The idea is called America and it still works. And this is what Rand Paul had to say. There is nothing conservative about bailing out Wall Street. Our party is encumbered by an inconsistent approach to freedom. The GOP of old has grown stale and moss covered. Who's right? Has it grown stale and moss covered? Listen, I think uh, the issue with our party is pretty simple. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the principles of our, of our party. Uh, but Republicans have not done as an effective job as we should in terms of, of talking about our principles in terms that average people can appreciate. Uh, why balancing the budget, as an example, uh, would be good for American families. We've got to do a better job of helping people understand uh, what our principles are in terms that they deal with every day. There was a surprise this week. Senator Rob Portman, who is a close friend of yours, a conservative from Ohio, said he has had a change of heart about gay marriage. He will now support gay marriage after learning his own 21-year-old son, Will, is gay. Had Portman shared this with you? Uh, he has, in fact, uh, called. Listen, Rob's a great friend and a longtime ally. And uh, I appreciate that he's decided to change uh, his views on this. Uh, but I believe that marriage is a union of, of a man and a woman. Can you imagine yourself in a situation where you reversed your decision, as Portman has, on gay marriage if a child of yours or someone you love told you they were gay? Listen, I believe that marriage is the union of one man and one woman. Uh, it's, it's what I grew up with. It's what I believe. Uh, it's what my church teaches me. And uh, uh, I can't imagine that position would ever change. I want to get quickly to a couple more topics. Gun legislation, will you commit to have a vote on the House floor on any gun legislation the Senate is able to pass? Uh, if they pass something, I've made clear that we will review it. Uh, in the meantime, our committees are continuing to have hearings, uh, trying to get to the bottom of what, what can we do uh, to help minimize these senseless crimes. I mean, listen, all of our hearts go out to the victims of these mass shootings. But we really need to understand what, what is it that we truly can do to ensure that this doesn't happen. Do you see any gun measures passing in the House? Uh, Background we'll, checks? We'll see what the Senate does. Uh, we'll review it. And we're going to continue uh, to have our hearings and review this issue. Just to close here, you're the highest ranking Catholic Republican in Congress. This week we saw the conclave elect Pope Francis, a Latin American. What does this mean for you? What does it mean for Catholics in the country? Well, this is the first time that we've had a, a pope from the Americas. So I think it's a, uh, it's a giant step uh, forward uh, for the church. Uh, Latin America uh, is a very, very Catholic continent. And, uh, and I do believe that uh, Pope Francis uh, uh, is the right person uh, to really bring reform to the church. And what kind of reform? Well, we've got a number of uh, issues uh, at the Vatican that I think uh, need fresh eyes. Uh, and he's clearly made a commitment uh, to clean up some of the problems uh, that the church has had. And it's pretty clear 
uh, from his humble nature uh, that, uh, that uh, his papacy uh, will be one that uh, I think a lot of people will appreciate. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Speaker Boehner. Great to have you here.